This is Curtis at Ace Per Head Studios coming at you with some new sports talk. Sticking with football, getting into the AFC North. The AFC North in 2021 is going to be an exciting and beautiful steel cage match. I decided to do some little investigations of the AFC North. What happened last year? Where they had just kind of out of the blue. And as I watched the games, I watched just about every division game and started doing some research, started really looking at where these teams were, where they went to in 2020 and where they're heading in 2021, I became enthralled. You know, we all start out football fans of a team. Passionate, you want your team to win. And that's really all that counts. But as you get older, Sometimes you start branching out and you just fall in love with the beauty of the game. The beauty of a good team, the beauty of a good story. And for me, just seeing what happened last year and where this division is going, it looks like it's going to be the best division in football, the most competitive, the most exciting. I, you know, I'm a Dolphins fan. Bills, quality, quality team. I believe the Patriots are a quality team. I believe the Dolphins are a quality team. Jets, you know, they're getting there. I'm like, that's a good division. But when I watched the matchups from last year, and looking over the AFC North, this is going to be brutal. All four teams look like they can be something. And it's going to be a battle. Like, I don't think any division is going to have as hard a fight to get to the top of their division as the AFC North. So, you know, AFC North used to be the AFC. When I'm, you know, I'm old, dude. I'm almost 50. So it was a central when I grew up. You know, then 2002 became the AFC North. You know, there was a time they had the, when I grew up, it was the Oilers. Earl the Pearl, man. Earl the Pearl. I loved Earl Pearl. Earl Campbell is still one of the best backs that history has ever seen. If you tag just like a compressed couple of years. Loved it. Steelers, man. You know, you young kids, I don't know if they even do it anymore. Flipping cards. We'd always flip cards and you'd just get this unbelievable stack of just vicious looking dudes from the, the Steelers' steel curtain defense. The, to me, the black and gold is just you know, it's the best colors. There's just some, I guess, growing up in the 70s, man. You know, I was, like I said, a Dolphin fan. But in the 70s, man, that defense, that that period of drafting has never been reached before. Unbelievable team. Browns. You know, I love the Browns as a kid. It's part, like history, you know. All you do, when you when you were at my age, you'd watch the old films, the black and white films with, with uh, Sable. Sable? I guess that's what his name is now. You know, talking about, uh, you know, Jim Brown and the Browns and, you know, Marion Motley. And it was just like this mystical team, you know? So, and then, you know, the Bengals. I was a Dolphin fan. Rooting for you. Hate, hate the 49ers. Was hoping Boomer could take him out. But anyway, I always had a deep respect for that central, which became north. And it, the thing I like about it now is, as an old timer, I hate to say it, I like the old style of ball. You know, to me, Lamar Jackson brings it all the way back into the day. When football first started, the running back was the quarterback. You know, I'm not saying he can't throw, he can throw, but you know, the, the focus on the run game, focus on the defense. The, even the climates of the team, it's just a very uh, intriguing division. You know, when I, when I started looking, I'm like, man, you know, you just give it to the Steelers, right? They lost to the Browns, but maybe it was a, whatever, you know, just a lucky win or whatever, you know. But when I watched all the division games, except for the blowouts, it was like three blowouts. I didn't watch them. I got to see how close these teams are. And that Browns-Ravens game last year, what an insane game. 
that is a if you have, are not a fan of either of these teams and didn't watch that game, get your hands on it. It was unbelievable, unbelievable game. High scoring back and forth. Lamar gets taken out for a drive, comes in on a fourth and five. Just, you know, what an epic game. And then the Ravens games against the uh, Steelers, so close, so tight. Browns watching the Browns. And, you know, seeing that Bengals game where they managed to win against the Steelers, it goes back to that motto. Throw away records when you play within your division. So, you know, we all know the deal. I mean, I'm, some, I'm sure most of you are uh, AFC New Orleans fans. Pitts, Pittsburgh, 12-4. and four. Four and two in a division. Ravens eleven and five. Four and two in a division. Browns eleven and five. Three and three in a division. Bengals four and eleven and one and five in a division. But NFL is unlike any sport where, from year to year, teams can become something other. They can turn to great or they can turn to garbage. And honestly, you know, all these teams did well in this off season. You know, I was very skeptical about the Bengals going for Chase over Suell. But as I looked into their draft, how they drafted it out and who they picked up, you know, that's a real good shot. That was an excellent draft and the right move. And you look at all the teams, they all kind of did steals. I'm a little uncertain. I think there was some, you know, questionable picks maybe. Not questionable, like bad players, but they could have gone to all directions. But here's the thing for the Steelers fans. If you want to watch, if you want to pick two franchises and their front offices to bet on, Steelers and the Ravens, they're some, two of the best front offices. You know, I've learned long ago, man, I'm not rolling the dice against those guys. I'm not. They year in and year out, they find people, they develop them with the staff, they pick the right guys. And for the most part, they're one of the most accurate and effective front offices in the game. I would definitely, I would say the Ravens are a little above the Steelers, but the consistency that the Steelers put forth every year is unbelievable. But Baker, Lamar, Big Ben, and Joe Burrow. Oh my, I'm watching Joe Burrow play, even like, you know, when he's losing or whatever. And I'm forgetting the guy's a rookie. He was astounding. He played amazing. You know, you look at the stats, like, uh, you know, not the hottest stat, but the way he, for him to be able to go out and constantly five wides, to be carrying the load of the offense as a rookie, the way he was, I throw those stats out the window. He was going for MVP until that injury. I am so impressed with Joe Burr. I mean, I so impressed. And, you know, then there's Lamar. All the talk, you know, superstar, is not that? He is. I was just, <laughs> I watched him in the, the, the uh, Cleveland game. And the big runs, the big passes. You know, I do still think he's in a maturation process. And I pray that the Ravens stop using him the way they are. I was watching the first Pittsburgh game and all those inside runs, I was like starting to get hurt. This guy is six foot, 200, six one, 200, and he's doing all these inside runs, taking the hits on a sack, doing it, just constantly getting beaten down. And I'm like, oh, hey, I'm saying this guy's got more heart in that little body than I've seen in so many players, you know? And then all part of me is like, don't burn him out. You know, I, there was one play to the end zone where he's on a scramble and he just flicks it across his body into the end zone for a touchdown. I'm like, my, this guy is like Fran Tarkington. You know, true, I think he works best in chaos. He works best when his field of vision is between the hashes. But the kid's smart. If he could just get that outside game, if he could just get a little more accurate in his progressions or his ability to read on a peripheral, maybe it's the receivers. I haven't dug into the tape that much. 
it's true. This guy is so amazing. I'm so impressed with Lamar. I mean, I definitely think he needs to work on his game. There's a little bit of inconsistency and rawness. But he's going, what, his fourth season? Give the kid a break. My thing, though, is I'm sorry, I got to do a little tirade here because I became so impassioned. You know, I was like, I like the kid. You know, I thought he was a really nice kid. I was like, oh, well, you know, you read the stats, you see a couple of games or whatever. But when you track, when I tracked him and I had to watch game after game after game, I was like drawn in. I just don't want him to get burnt out. Because he needs, to, like, again, older dude, Steve Young. For you people who don't remember, Steve Young used to run like a running back. Go watch old tape of Steve Young. And after getting the snot beat out of him, he finally figured it out. Dude, I got to save my body. I'm just going to use this in emergency situations or when I have to. You know, let me let other people take their beatings. Lamar needs that. He, If this kid can stay in the game, stay healthy for another three or four years, who knows what this kid's capable of. If he can just start working the outsides, get a little more accurate, give the kid time to develop. Look at Mayfield. Baker came out. Hot year one, poor year two, started year three, rough. People are like, ah, it's garbage, garbage. He finally found his stride and he was excellent. People who don't watch Baker play, man, you should need to go watch him play in the tail end. I mean, I've seen just the division games. He made huge strides. He needed time. Lamar is, is a product of his greatness. But he also might suffer for that greatness. He just I'm just hoping that Harborough has a better game plan where it's not run, run, <laughs> Lamar, run, Lamar, pass, Lamar, or run, you know. Just let this kid survive. But anyway, I'm just, I went off a little bit. The Ravens, I'm a Edgar Allan Poe fan, so I have a passion for him. Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis is a unique figure in football. How could you not be passionate about him? Steelers, Bengals. You know, this is a great division. So now I'm going to go in. Browns have so much talent. And you see, the thing I think for this, this, this season, it's going to be about offensive lines. I mean, it's always about offensive lines. Say it, say it again. The NFL world goes round and round by your offensive line. There's no unit in the game that is more important. None. Offensive line creates time of possession through the run game, secure passing game, keeps the defense fresh, allows the skills. So, but even in the AFC North, it's even more critical because you enter into these cold weather, cold environment games where the run game is essential. And I think this is where the Browns and the Ravens really step forward. I feel like the Steelers, you know, they they might know more. You know, they let some players go. They made some draft picks. They're betting on some, like, fresh guys, guys with not lots of reps. So, you know, we'll see. And then there's the Bengals, like I said. You know? Burrow, it's a shame. But they made some interesting moves. So I'm going to go into Browns. Greg Newsom, they drafted him in the first round. They got Greedy Williams, who's just been really ineffective and injured. Great pick. The Browns had problems stopping Lamar on the scramble. They need to take care of that. They had problems in the passing game. They were bottom third in the passing game and top 10 in run stop, and they addressed it. Uh, Jeremiah Ousa uh, Cor uh, Coromo Coromoa. Joker. He's that hybrid kind of guy you can bring in. He can play coverage, maybe even spy on, on Lamar on occasion. Excellent addition for your first two picks. They hit the two pieces they need. That line is insane. You go look at the Browns offensive line, and they probably have the best line in the division, one of the best lines in football offensive line. And that's just amazing concept that a lot of teams don't go after. They got a young rookie quarterback and they start building everything but the offensive line. So Browns have a phenomenal offensive line, phenomenal front on defense. Some good pieces. Denzel Ward's a quality player, little injury in and out. 
Troy Hill I like. He's pretty good. And now the a- a addition of Greg Newsom, this really addressed. Because when you watch the games, it was big passing plays. That was really an issue. You know, as the season progressed early on, Mayfield was a little off. And then it wasn't being able to handle Lamar on the scramble. And I think uh, Ousa Koromoa is the right guy. He's big enough to play nickel, kind of be like a safety, adds more speed to your defense. So the, the Browns did a great job. They are stacked. I mean, you really look at that team. Look at the receivers they have. You know, look at the running backs. They are stacked at running backs. They have two phenomenal running backs. They have two great receivers. They have a phenomenal line, a young, talented quarterback ready to step forward who's grown so much. You know, his ability to to scramble, to pick up yards, to throw accurate passes, not make the dumb interceptions like he had in the past. That one against the Ravens, though, hurt. He would have had the win, but that was just... But he came back. So, I mean, he's young, year three. But the Browns are certainly stacked. And they knocked out the Steelers in the wild card. Handled them easily. So, this is a year where the Browns had high expectations. And I, I cannot see them taking a step back with all the moves they've made and how the team has grown and how they're poised. And because of Mayfield's contract, they got about a year or two left before because there's so much talent, they're not gonna be able to resign. So this is the year for the Browns. Can't you can't sleep on the Browns. You know, and obviously the Steelers. Steelers are the Steelers. Year in and year out, they're right there. Big Ben had some serious injuries. I don't, he doesn't look like the same guy, you know, but he's still good. And a lot of times. You know, with the Ravens and with Cleveland, he was just a little smarter, a little more savvy. He was a little more consistent. And, you know, now it's another year removed. Maybe this offseason, his body will heal a little bit. I have a friend that, uh, well, he used to be a friend, who used to love uh, the Ravens. And he would say, Big Ben is like Freddy Krueger or Jason from Friday the 13th. He's like, you, you kill a guy and he's on the ground and he gets back up. It's just like you can't put the man down and he is he's tough as nails and he's still a guy but what I like is Mason Rudolph showed a lot is you know is Mason Rudolph set up to be the quarterback of the future I don't know I don't know but probably the best court obviously no not probably definitely the best quarterback group in the division you have height as far as talent experience with Big Ben and Excellent depth with Rudolph. Um, You know, it was close games. The games against the Ravens that you guys won was really just about the Ravens being a little more sloppy. Lamar would give and take away, give and take away. And that's a thing, too. When you get beat like that, man, it's hard to keep your poise throughout the entire game. So, the Steelers... Might have had the best record. They might have knocked off the Ravens twice, but they cannot sit on their laurels. This is going to be a very, very... They were 32nd in rushing. That is not steal of time. That's not the steal of team that I know. And, you know, there's, there's like rumors out there, things that Big Ben doesn't like play action because he doesn't like to take his eyes off all the secondary. I hope he gets away from that because play action is very... Very easy pickings for a quarterback. And now that you got Harris, what a great pick. I mean, some people say they should have got an offensive lineman, tackle specifically. And I can agree, you know, but we don't know the evaluations of the staff. You know, you re-signed uh, Zach Banner. He's only got less than 90 snaps, but they believe in him. Another another franchise, maybe like, ah, I screwed up. But, you know, Tomlin... And the front office of the Steelers, I got trust in them. They've proven it. They're tried and true. Until they fail, I'm not going to say anything. Harris is a special talent. His blocking, pass blocking, and his ability to catch as a third down receiver, phenomenal. Huge. I think that his power 
is going to be an excellent asset. And even though maybe you guys should have drafted a tackle, you did some other things to uh, fill that out. You know, David Castro had his worst season since 2012. But uh, Okafora as a Chukaman. I remember him getting drafted. I studied on him in 2018. 1,100 snaps, showed consistency, hot and cold, a little more cold. But he's a young tackle. He's probably coming in there. He's going to be a starter. They believe in him. You know, I, I got to say, again, Zach Bannon, Okafor, uh, are going to be there. I, I personally don't feel comfortable about it, you know, but I sure don't know as much as Tomlin. I don't see these kids day day after day. And I think that for Steeler fans and for fans of football, we're going to be able to watch these two players. And if they do pan out, with it's going to be a huge feather in the cap of the Steelers. And it's going to be a refresher of how little we really know. So good quality pickups. Uh, Pat Freemuth in, as a tight end. Uh, we pair him with Ebron. I think that's going to really help uh, Big Ben. You know, you guys had a lot of drops. J uh, Schuster, Juju Schuster had a really like a low season. It just He really didn't play that well. And every time I was watching the games, there was lots and lots of drops. And so, you know, you, know, you got to figure that these guys are not going to drop the balls much. So there's quality receivers out there. And again, I got to dig into your roster a little bit more. But I love the fact of two quality tight ends. And Freemuth, you know, he has a little, he breaks tackles very well. He needs to work on his blocking, a little bit of dropsies. But overall, good player. Like I said, uh, um, you picked up Kendrick Green. I really like Kendrick Green. Very All the scouts liked Kendra Green. They say, you know, you play guard or center. But most likely center is where he's at. And Hassanauer, he was like, okay, he was pretty good. You know, and he only had 303 snaps. So you got some depth on the interior. You got to have faith and trust on the edges. So it looks like the Steelers did pretty good. Mike Hamilton, you got picked up. Uh, oh, no, Mike uh, Hilton, your cornerback, you let him go. And but and they went to the he went to the Bengals, so that's going to be an interesting watch. I I didn't really get a chance to dig into the corners, but from the blogs I was reading and the reports, he was he was considered a pretty good cornerback. So I'm going to go back when I go back and watch all these games and take these names and really start studying out their play. Villanova, I'm so surprised you let him go. I think there was some kind of animosity between him and the other players, but he went to the Ravens. So. Kalen Bellagio picked up. Perfect uh, pairing with Harris. It's the offensive line, though, I think. I think ha the Steelers will go how their offensive line goes. If uh, Okafor and um, Banner pan out, I think the Steelers will be just fine. But if not, if not, could get ugly. Then there's the Ravens. Ravens had an amazing offseason. Amazing. I love their offseason. Like I said, they picked Villanova up. You, you could see that there was a lot of extra pressure. There was a lot of extra pressure. They weren't able to get the push on the offensive line. And bringing him in so they could move um, Orlando Brown to the Chiefs for a free first round pick, which they used on Rashad Bateman, who ran a sub 4-4. Four four, and he's an excellent pickup. Finn fan, we spent Two first round picks on Waddle. I'm hoping it does it goes well. But from value standpoint, Bateman that late to swap out Brown, who's gonna demand a giant contract, to bring in Villanova, beautiful. Um Sammy Watkins and Kevin Zietler. Now, Watkins will help a little bit. He's not who he was drafted to be. He's been injured, inconsistent. But Lamar needs all the help he can get. And Zietler is still a quality guard. One of the top half of the guards in the league. So to bring him in, 
is a huge deal. And I loved uh, as a big Ben Cleveland. The guy's a giant, 6'6", six, six, like 357. You're going to bring him in there, give him time to develop. That's the thing I like about the Steelers and the Ravens, their ability to develop players. You have to believe these guys are going to go play well, you know, because it's just year after year the same thing happens. So these were this – I love what the Ravens did because they their defense – Steelers' defense is excellent. Ravens' deal, uh, defense is excellent. You know, Browns' defense is, is excellent. That has some, they have some holes, though. But the Ravens really needed some kind of potency at receiver, and they needed to, f- to build that offensive line out, and they did it. And they added perfect pieces. And again, it goes back to Lamar. I just pray that Lamar is not used the same. I just pray that they can go back and start creating a system where he's getting the ball out to the receivers more. Maybe not. He got some quality. You got at least. Bateman has no weaknesses. He's a good receiver. He's going to be a good receiver on the pro level. Will it take a year or two? I don't know. Maybe three. Receivers are very difficult. But he's got the talent now. You know, he's got to move away from just attacking the tight ends. He's got to move away from running constantly. He's got to save this kid's career. Just imagine what this kid would be like when he starts getting experience under his belt. So that's my hope. You know, Ravens to me outdid the Steelers as far as the offseason, unless the Steelers know more than the rest of us as far as Banner and Okafor. So then is the Browns. We talked about that. They did a great job with Newsom, Ward, uh, Joker. I'm going to say it. But the thing with them is they've got all sorts of talent. They have now they now have true pressure. That run defense is phenomenal. And that's what this division's about. And to me, whoever can run the football and whoever can, can stop the run is gonna it's gonna have the division. So I'm very, very interested to see where that's gonna head. Will they fold? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping to see the Browns. Browns fans have been suffering longer than Dolphins fans. So I would really, really like to see them take over. And so now, like, you know, we talk about the Steelers, the Ravens, the Browns. And it's like the Bengals are like the redhead stepchild. But that's not really the case. You know, they did some Jamar Chase. Receivers are a hit and miss. More misses in the top 10 than hits. More misses in the first round than hits. But you got to believe Jamar Chase, because of his past history, because of what he's shown, he's going to be a quality addition. I just didn't really think, when I watched the Bengals play, the receivers didn't seem like a problem. But they went this route. They pushed getting that offensive line talent, talent to the back. And bringing in Riley Reef. Carmen Jackson, Deontay Smith, and Trey Hill. This could end up being brilliant. Now, Riley Reef is a stopgap. He's a two-year player. But when you watch Burrow play, he is so smart. He doesn't need much extra time. And really, the exterior pressure wasn't the main issue. It was that interior pressure. That's what took his knee out. Jordan, Michael Jordan was your left guard. He was terrible, 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 terrible. And Riley Reef being over there is a big deal. Uh, Jackson Carmen was re- reviewed with raves, 330 pounds, but they kept saying over and over and over again, don't think this guy's just a guard. It's going to take a little time, big and agile. So you bring him in for your future left tackle who can refine his skills inside with lesser space. It could be brilliant. If you can get Chase and a solid left guard who can turn into your left tackle in a year or two, that's an, that's an ace move. And um, Deontay Smith, 
He had the highest win percentage in one-on-ones in the senior bowl. Now, a lot of senior bowl, the senior bowl doesn't have the highest level of talent. So it is, you have to, a lot of the, the most talented players, the players, they come out when they're juniors. So it's good, but it's not superstar status. But his ability to move is unquestionable. He needs some help. He's a year two, maybe three before he gets himself ready, which is fine though. Riley Reef's there. Um, uh, uh, Jonas is on your on your other side, and now you got Carmen inside playing that left guard. You have time to develop, and then there's t- Trey Hill. Trey Hill is a monster, but he's a little fat. Just to say say it nicely. Giant, bad knees. He had two surgeries on his knees, and, uh, and he needs real man muscle, not the big blubber, but. The guy's powerful. He's able to hold off linemen with single hands, operate his hands independently. This is a guy who's like a three or four year development after he gets his body together and stuff like that. But this is great. This is great addition. This really offers hope. But you're gonna, you have to depend on uh, Jackson Carmen to come in and to really come out of the gates hot because you know, when I saw Burrow play, yes, he could process quickly and all. But what I was amazed with is his ability to move. People talked about him. You know, it's, oh, he's got you know, hey, he's kind of athletic. Some of the plays he was making on the move was phenomenal. And it's a shame now he's got to wear that leg brace, which you know, it, it's they say it's doesn't restrict movement, but it does. It's going to take him a little while. And now that knee's never going to be the same. It's a shame. This kid is a superstar. Superstar from the pocket, outside the pocket. It's um, it's a shame that this happened. It cannot happen again. The Bengals have to do... You know, I know that they, you know... I know they want to... They have a star here. They know they have a star. They want to put a lot on this plate. And they want to, you know... Let him throw from five wise concepts, but you've got to bring it back. Protect this kid. He's he's. It's almost like he's a national treasure. This kid's that good. He really is that good. It's amazing, and it's a shame that that talent is would get wasted. So, this is just my cursory look into the AFC North. You know, I'm sure I miss some players' names. I'm sure. My dad is not fully there, but this is just from a one-week investigation. Now I'm going to go back, re-watch. I got the names in my head. I got the situations. And I am going to watch every division game this year because it's that exciting. Any of these teams, if, if Joe Burrow comes back and he's healthy and they can, if they can get this offensive line right, that's a dangerous team. I don't think there's a chance that they take the division, but they can they can steal the thunder from somebody and knock them out. The, to me, it's a three horse race with maybe some kind of surprise wild card because Joe Burrow is that good, you know. But every one of these games should be exciting, must watch football. So I'm gonna go back, as I said, digging deeper. I'm gonna go through this one more time, really break down the tape. I want to bring some tape next time. And uh, you guys, you know, I mean, for you fans of the division, it's probably not a happy thing. You know, you don't want a hard road to win your division. Good news is if you get to the top, you've beaten the best. And I think whoever comes out of this division is going to be a very dangerous thing because I don't really, I'm not high on the Chiefs anymore. I think that they've come a little, become a little bloated. The offensive line is in flux. And I don't think there is a certain guarantee to go back. So I is a real good chance that whoever comes out of the AFC North, you know, I do believe in the Bills, tough team. But this is going to be must-watch football. Anyway, this is my little take on the AFC North. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I've been focusing on the Dolphins. That's what I do. I write for them. So there's a whole new venture for me. Get my feet wet. I'm coming back, though. I'll be sharper next time. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And most of all, comment, because I am definitely watching these games. And I want to get my feet 
<laughs> I want to get my knife sharpened. So I'm on point when these games come. So thank you again. This is Curtis saying farewell and be well.